Ultimately, how do you cut down on that really fine, dangerous dust that fills up a workshop? Shop vacs and dust collectors are part of the process, but they don't handle everything. And in a lot of cases, they can actually contribute to the problem of airborne dust. My shop build is winding down, and the last thing I had to tackle was final phase dust collection. That's why I built this thing. It's more or less a homemade air scrubber, and it's something that I think every shop should have. So today I'm gonna to discuss how it works, why you need it, and I'll even give a few notes on how I built mine. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. Cutting down on dust and debris in a workshop is like warfare. It's complicated, messy, and you almost never get a complete victory. When I was first planning out this shop, I wanted to get a Shop Fox dust collector, a 1.5 horsepower. This is a great tool from a great brand, and I actually went so far as to order one. But after I'd planned things out a little more, I decided I had to send it back. Big, single-phase dust collectors like this are best for picking up large debris in high volume. Think wood chips coming off a planer or a joiner. But they actually struggle with finer dust and smaller tools. This is because they suck massive quantities of air at a very low pressure. If you hook a huge tool like that up to a smaller miter saw or table saw, it'll just stress its own motor out. It's like a whale breathing. It can't get the volume of air it needs from such small machine ports. I ultimately didn't plan to have a big planer or joiner or anything like that, just smaller contractor grade tools. So the better option for me was a system of shop vacs. Shop vacs suck a smaller quantity of air at a much higher pressure. So they're far better suited to hook up to these smaller ports and they'll actually pull dust through more effectively. But both dust collectors and shop vacs still struggle with finer dust particles. They'll catch everything up to a certain size, but they'll just pump finer dust back out into the room. So you have to implement various filter combinations to cut this down. Some large dust collectors have expensive pleated filters that catch smaller particles. And for my shop vac, I use a filter bag and pleated filter combo, which gets me closer to a HEPA level filtration. I did a video on these filters and what HEPA means, so check that one out if you're curious. But even with all these measures in place, you'll still struggle to catch dust in a shop. This is because cutting lumber is just a violent process. Dust explodes into the air at the point where blade meets wood, and from there it can go anywhere. To catch all these particles, you have to bring your suction really close to the blade. But you only see this effectively engineered on very expensive industrial cabinet saws, which few people can afford. So the rest of us have this super fine dust floating around the shop constantly. And no matter how much vacuuming you do, you'll never get it all. Especially since your vacuum outflow just stirs it up more. As I said in my HEPA video, this super fine dust is what causes us to get sick. It gets way down in your lungs, causing problems both immediate and chronic. You have to try to control it at full shop level. And your best bet for doing this, I think, is a unit like this, a box fan air purifier. Box fans actually circulate air very effectively and they keep us cool in the shop at the same time. So they're dual function. People have been knocking these together on job sites and in houses for years. You're basically just pairing up typical house HVAC filters with a normal 20 inch box fan. These pleated filters are designed to catch particles in that harmful sub 0.10 micron category. And the fan creates the draw to bring those particles towards the filters where they get trapped. And the cool thing is your design for a unit like this can be almost anything. Box fans are almost always 20 inches by 20 inches. So in a pinch, you can literally just tape a 20 by 20 filter to the back of a fan. But I wanted something a little more durable, so I built this simple frame. It's just half inch plywood designed to hold two 20 by 16 filters in a system of cradles and slides. I started by shaping out a couple trapezoidal pieces, including a bottom one with a lip for the fan to sit on. Then to create the interior space, I just made sort of plywood stilts that would prop the two trapezoids about 20 inches apart. I created flat surfaces for the fan to butt against at the front, then a narrow wall at the back. The slides for the filters are just built up plywood pieces. I really didn't even plan this much. I just roughly mapped out perimeters with a pencil. Then I started ripping, gluing, and shooting on plywood pieces that would cradle a one inch filter. What I wound up with were these diagonal slides in a pretty decent little frame. But there were gaps around the filters that would let a lot of air through, cutting down on filtration. So I just covered these with duct tape. Pretty much the original intended use of duct tape. This let the fan create a lot more draw and more fine particles got sucked into the pleats. That's really all there is to it. Now I get a box fan to cool me off and a filtration method to catch more of the fine dust floating around in my shop. Just running the thing for 20 minutes or so will create multiple full cycles of all the air in the room. It's still no replacement for a decent dust mask, which I'll cover in a later video. And it's not as effective as a true air scrubber, which you may want for really hazardous projects. 
But for roughly 40 bucks, it's hard to beat and you can just cut out and replace filters as they get dirty over time. I'm gonna mount mine on this rolling cart so I can move it around the shop more freely. What did you think of this video? Was it helpful? Do you have a different design for your shop? Let me hear about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon and please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.